So in this video, I want to talk about average shear stress. Uh, average shear stress is denoted by the Greek letter tau. And the equation for shear stress is P over A, where P is the load that's parallel to the surface. So this is parallel to surface. And A, this is the shear area. So let's see what this means by this picture. So we have two plates. and they're glued together. Okay, two plates, they're glued together. Uh, uh, so it'll be... So the area that's glued I'm talking about is here. They're glued together there. So this is glued. And we have a load P, which makes this load parallel again. The load if you if you look at this air the the red area, which is the shear area. The force is going parallel to this area. So if I look at this top down, so if I was looking at this plate top down, we have this shear area. That's the area. Here's the load, P. So we have an equal and opposite load going this way. The load is going parallel to the surface. That's why I said that up there, the parallel to surface. If it was going perpendicular, remember perpendicular to surface, that'll be normal stress, which is uh, notated by sigma. So this is normal stress. So I'll talk about that in another video. So then what happens if we have two plates with a bolt connection? So bolt connection, we have two plates like this. This is a load P, this is a load P. Here's a bolt that's going through both of these plates. And let's say this has a diameter diameter equals D right well assuming that there's no friction here between the plates the shear for this this is considered considered single shear because um, there's only one spot one cross-sectional area that it's actually shearing so what's going to happen is if we just look at this bolt, it's going to shear in this manner, right? So this is going this way, this is going this way. So again, consistent with our definition above, if this is the cross section of the bolt, right? the force is parallel to the surface. So that's why this is uh, notated as shear stress. And again, the shear will be the load divided by the cross-sectional area, which in this case would be pi over four times d squared, because this is our area of a circle. So what ha what about if we had 
this scenario. We have two plates this way and then a plate this way. Here's a load P. Here's a bolt. It goes through all three of these plates. So if we do sum of forces in the x direction, we have P going to the right. So then what will these question marks be? Well, that'll be um, minus P over two minus P over two and that'll equal zero. So that means each of these uh, plates here will have loads of P over two. I mean, you can really just see that by inspection. So how do we know what the average shear stress is in the bolt in the cross sectional area here? Well, as you can see, this bolt will shear in two different spots. So this bolt isn't is under double shear. So how do we find the average shear stress for this bolt? Well, you can either look at this middle plate or you can look at any one of these plates. You have to look at, I would say it's easiest to just look at one. So let's isolate this middle plate here. So if we isolate this one, we still have a P load P going this way. That means there's going to be equal and opposite reaction over here. So that means the force that's going through this member is P. And we have two shear areas. Because the bolt's coming through this way and it's ending up, oh, it's going to continue to go through here. So we have two areas to consider. So that means our average shear stress is going to be P divided by two times the area, which if this is, if the diameter is denoted by D, this is going to equal P times twice the area, which is pi over four D squared. Of course, if you simplify this, it'll be P times pi over two d squared. And just to show you, this works if we analyze this member too, or this one. So any member on the left hand side, we have a load p over two here. The bolt is coming through like this and it's only shearing here for this one. So equal and opposite reaction, P over two. So when we look at this guy, our shear average will be the load divided by the area. Well, the load going through this plate is P over two. And the area that's under shear is just just the area, just one times the area. So if we simplify this, P, the two can go in the denominator, the area is pi over four times D squared, which can simplify to P times pi over two times D squared, and these are the same. So it doesn't matter which member that you analyze, but you have to first find the load that's going through that member and, f and figure out how much area is under shear. So for the first case, we had to calculate twice the area times, or uh, uh, divide that into the load that's going through, uh, that's load that's passing through the shear area, which is P, versus the second case where the load was P over two and however, the shear area was just one times the area, but we end up getting the same answer. So 
this was just an introduction. Uh, in the next video, I will do a more in-depth example, a more concrete example with numbers.